What is a drive cycle? More specifically, what is a forward drive cycle? In general, the drive cycle allows the OBD2 monitors to activate or become online. In our personal experiences, we have had to do many drive cycles with four of our Mustangs. If you're watching this video, chances are you've had this issue with one of your vehicles. Doesn't necessarily have to be a Ford vehicle, but for us, that's the one consistent problem we've had across the board with our Mustangs. Ugh, I, I just can't do this. I, I'm so sorry. A video on drive cycles? I don't know what I was thinking. I'm really sorry. I thought this would be good of the playlist. And now that I've actually started this video and I'm going through this, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, 20 minutes of information on a Ford drive cycle. No, this isn't gonna work. Let's completely move the direction of this video somewhere else. Let's say, I assume if you're watching this video, you already know what a Ford drive cycle or a general drive cycle is and how it is needed for smog emissions depending on your state and where you live. A drive cycle allows the OBD2 sensors to become active or come online. These required monitors are needed to pass smog, again, based on your state and your requirements. You can do your own research on OBD2 monitors, EVAP monitors, O2 sensors, and the other monitors needed to get you ready to pass smog emissions. I, I just can't go any further. This, I'm falling asleep doing this. I'm really sorry, but he here's the problem. All four of these Mustangs have had drive cycle issues or issues passing smog emissions. We have had to perform numerous drive cycles on each of these vehicles, and two of them still won't pass smog. Now, according to Ford and Ford Performance, the drive cycle should activate all of the monitors necessary to pass smog certification. That is essentially why you perform a drive cycle. A drive cycle is literally a procedure in which you drive the car at different speeds in different conditions like you would in everyday life. The Ford drive cycle has only ever worked on one of our Mustangs. And guess what? It's the Mustang that's been turned into the dedicated track only vehicle. Here's the problem and here's why I made this video. Forget explaining what a drive cycle is. I'd actually like to vent a little bit. Three of our Mustangs, yes, three, will not respond to a drive cycle. Every time we perform a drive cycle and take it in to get smogged, for whatever reason, we have several monitors, this monitor, that monitor, that will not come online and will not register with California smog. The first vehicle we had this problem with was our 2012 Ford Mustang Shelby American GT350. This was a Ford Mustang GT that was transformed into Shelby American's GT350. This was a California purchased car and shipped from Ford to Sunnyvale, California. When we picked up the car from Shelby American's museum delivery and brought it home to California, it would not pass smog. And guess what? That was 2013. It is now 2020. It still won't pass smog. The drive cycle just will not work with this vehicle. We've been back and forth with Ford, California DMV, emissions experts, We've seen the referee here in California in the San Fernando Valley several times at Pierce College. No one can help us and everyone just points the finger at someone else. We've even been offered a buyback from Ford, but are you kidding? We're not just gonna turn over our numbered Shelby GT350, limited edition from Shelby American, signed by Carol Shelby, just because the car won't pass smog. We just keep getting passed around from the California DMV, Ford corporate, Ford Performance, back over to the state referee, it's just getting old. The second vehicle we had this problem with was our 2017 Ford Mustang Shelby GT350 widebody. This vehicle was purchased from Blue Springs Ford in Blue Springs, Missouri. Now with this being an out-of-state vehicle and us knowing how strict California is with the smog emission certification, we knew we might have some issues getting this car smogged. It was coming from out of state and we just knew our luck with Mustangs and getting them smogged. When this car was delivered to us, there were actually no issues right away. 
and the key word is right away. As soon as we installed the Cooks Green Catted Competition Exhaust System for the GT350, those green cats didn't mix very well with California regulations. Again, the OBD2 sensors came offline. After the installation, we couldn't get some of the monitors back online. And again, we were stuck with a situation where we couldn't smog the car. So we had a 2012 GT350 collecting dust in the garage. And now we had a 2017 GT350 that no longer wanted to pass smog. But because we are literally stupid, we kept buying more Mustangs. Yeah, that makes sense. The third car that's given us the most problems and is still collecting dust is our 2019 Ford Mustang Shelby GT350R. I don't know what's going on, but with the purchase of this GT350R, we are now batting three for four with three Mustangs that just won't pass smog and monitors that won't come online. This car was custom ordered and arrived to us with factory to transport truck miles on it, barely five miles. Ford Performance actually is very familiar with us and our problems with the drive cycles and they assured us we wouldn't have an issue with the R or getting it smogged or taking it right away to get it smogged. Well, yeah, guess what? We had the same problem with this vehicle. Ford says we need to complete the drive cycle. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to drive it on public roads. Well, the state referee and California DMV won't offer us a temporary registration so we can put mileage on the car to do a proper drive cycle. Now, yes, I guess you could just kind of sneak the car out and start putting miles on it, but who wants to risk that? And really, I don't recommend that, and I'm not saying you should do that. <clears throat> Anyway, because we frequent the track and because we're fortunate enough to have a trailer, it has been recommended to us, and actually, as stupid as we are, I can't believe we thought of it on our own, we thought about taking the car to the track and putting mileage on it there. Here's the problem. Number one, I don't wanna put track miles on a car that only has five miles on the odometer. I know some people say cars like this are already broken in from the factory, ready to go right out of the box. I'm not one of those people. I like to follow the instructions, put the proper break-in miles on it. The car's not going on the track with five miles on the odometer. I'm sorry, it's just not. Second, even though we could take it to a racetrack and drive it around in the parking lot, or just take it to private property and put mileage on it, that's not the point. I shouldn't have to do that. Either California needs to loosen the regulations and allow a temporary registration so we can put mileage on the car and complete a drive cycle, or Ford needs to give us back like $450,000 for the time and energy spent in trying to get this car smogged. We haven't even been able to enjoy it. There's five miles on the odometer. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Now there's seven miles on the odometer because we've driven it around the parking lot a hundred times. What is really interesting is the one Mustang we've turned into a dedicated track car where smog emissions issues do not apply is the Boss 302. We purchased this vehicle used and we are the third owner. When we took the vehicle in to get smog the first time, some of the monitors did not come online. We could not smog the vehicle. However, we did complete a drive cycle on the Boss 302 and it smogged afterward. So what's the end result? Well, if you've been following the channel, the 2017 Shelby GT350 wide body has been sold. It went to Arizona and the new owner, I'm pretty sure is gonna take off the catalytic converters and take it to the track and make it kind of a track only vehicle and have fun with it. So where does this leave us? The 2012 GT350? Lucky for this car and us, it's more of a cars and coffee type of car. When this problem first started, when we received the car in 2012 from Shelby American, the California referee made an exception. After he thoroughly inspected the car, spoke with Shelby American and Ford, he could obviously tell all of the proper equipment was in place. And although it was a modified car, it still had its catalytic converters and all of the other components that would help it pass California smog emissions. We were allowed an exception for that vehicle up until right around 2015. Starting in that time period, new laws and a new local referee prevented us from getting that exception for that vehicle. That car has literally been sitting in our garage, driven on private property, until we can figure out what to do. Believe it or not, we are still going back and forth with Ford, Ford Performance, Shelby American, California DMV, the local referee, and the state on what to do with this vehicle and how we can drive it legally. And now, the GT350R. Yes, we are in the same position with this vehicle, and actually our local referee laughed when he saw us bring a different Mustang up on a trailer to his station. The referee will not make an exception, although this is an OEM stock vehicle that we brought to the referee station 
with still most of its shipping plastics on it. But because a few sensors would not come online for the OBD2 monitors, the car could not be tested properly. The referee would not help us get a temporary registration so we could put miles on the car to complete the drive cycles necessary to bring all of the monitors online. Ford keeps telling us to just do a drive cycle. Well, we can't do a drive cycle unless we can drive it on the streets, but we can't drive it on the streets. Okay, you see where this is going. Now, in terms of the 2012 Ford Mustang Boss 302, that's obviously not an issue. The catalytic converters have been removed from that car and it's a dedicated track car, so really drive cycles don't mean anything. That car will not be testing for smog certification Ever. So now that the Boss is a dedicated track-only vehicle and the 2017 GT350 widebody has been sold, we only have two Mustangs to deal with with this issue. It's still too much. It's ridiculous. Here's what I'd like to know. Has anyone watching this video had this issue? I would really like to know because believe it or not, we're still going back and forth with Ford Racing. I, I mean, I'm sorry, Ford Performance. That's how long we've been dealing with Ford. Yes, we've been trying to handle this issue with the 2012 GT350 since Ford Performance was previously known as Ford Racing. Yes, it's been that long. I would really like your opinion. Is this Ford's problem? Who do we point the finger at? I can tell you this, we rejected the buyback program. It's a collectible item. It's a numbered Shelby GT350 that was limited. It's not my Diamondback bike from when I was a kid. You can't offer us 350 bucks and call it a day. So we're keeping the car because we really love it. So someone has to fix this. It's not gonna be us. Who's it gonna be? And how is it gonna get fixed? And where are we gonna drive it? We're really tired of just looking at it. With regard to the GT350R, I really feel like if we complete a drive cycle or two on that vehicle, the monitors will come online. So for now, the R sits. The 2012 Shelby American GT350 R sits. Do you know why we've been so patient? Because the Boss 302 has done its job keeping us occupied with how awesome it is on track. The car is that fun, that fast, stays that flat around turns, and has kept us preoccupied and completely patient while we figure out the smogging issues and OBD2 monitor and sensor issues in both vehicles. Thank you for joining us on this. Hit the subscribe button and like. <laughs> Video on drive cycles.